Gotta get some water and feed for those hens before we can dive into our sharpening work here. What a day. Hey kiddos. Hey girls. I just wanted to mention something here. I figured I should talk about something real quick. Just listening to in my earbuds here. I'm always listening to music or something. I thought I'd listen to something a little bit different today. I'm listening to uh, Olivia Rodrigo, which is which is a little bit different, probably what you wouldn't expect, but I was turned on to her music by uh, a recent video I watched by Rick Beto. Now some of you guys, if you're musicians or you're big into music, you'll know the name Rick Beto, if, although not necessarily my style. I can appreciate all different styles of music because I'm a musician myself. And But anyways, I'm rambling on. A line she just mentioned in a song was that everyone is telling her, of course, she's a, she's a young girl, she's a teenage girl. Everyone older than her is telling her that these are her golden years. These are her good years. And she doesn't feel like that. She doesn't feel like, like really, is this, this the best that it gets? And I heard that a lot too growing up, and I've heard a lot of other young kids say that. Uh, um, it's just that cliche thing. Oh, you've got it. you wait till you get out of school, things start going downhill. These are the best years of your life. And if you're young and watching this, if you make good decisions, you're very intent about living your life. These years you're living now are, <laughs> I can almost guarantee you, are not the best years of your life. I'm gonna hit 30 years old this year. And uh, my years just keep getting better, man, every year. Would I ever want to go back to high school? No way. Compared to now, it just, best years, not even close. So take some encouragement in that. And you might be watching saying, yeah, look at this guy talking. This guy's got it all. I recognize I do have it really good. But you older guys, go down in the comment section, leave some encouraging words for the young fellows watching this or the teenagers that might be in school because I know I have them. I can look at the demographics and see that I have uh, sub 18 year olds watching the channel and young guys and maybe even a few young girls there watching. Go ahead you older guys with the wisdom. Give them some encouragement and, uh, and let them know. <laughs> Again this comes down to making good choices and living a good life. You can't just live however you want, laze around on the couch and play video games and stuff like that and expect things to improve after high school. If that's your aim or, that, or that's your game plan there, then yeah, you're, not, you're probably not gonna keep getting better after high school. But if you make good decisions, make good financial decisions, work hard, take care of yourself, keep your body healthy, make good relationship decisions, just keeps getting better at life can be so, so good. Now this little beauty is quite old, but still in good, good solid shape. The handle's a little bit loose there. Not sure if we can, if we have the room to pin that a little, pin that a little bit tighter or not, we'll see. We have a few issues with the aluminum guards here, the bolsters, so we're gonna see if we can refinish those and bring them back in clean up the rust of course and then a sharpening because this knife really doesn't have much of an edge on it there now. Now let's go ahead on the wire wheel and see how much of this blade gunk we can clean up. I don't know if that's rust or if it's material, I'm not sure what it is. Very successful blade clean up there. Look at that. Got all that gunk off of there. Now we can actually see and appreciate that heli stamp. There's some fairly bad bl bad like blade drags, like scores in there. It's not a problem at all. The blade still has nice character. That's what I really like about the wire wheel. It doesn't strip off every bit of patina. It doesn't strip off every bit of character. It just removes all the stuff you don't want. All the gunk and and uh, old tree sap and, and it's aggressive enough to take off rust and things like that but doesn't remove a lot of the character which is great. Just spent the entire morning in here been in here all day grinding so what's another uh, few minutes? 
Now let's see if our belt will stay together on us this time. What I've, what I've done is remove this platen so that we have what's called like a slack belt to work on. This is still fairly tight, but on something like this, which is a, a convex surface, this is round, you don't want a flat platen because you'll get too hard of facets on there. It'll be too hard to remove. So what we can do here is I can just work those and the, you see how the belt is, is kind of falling away. It's wrapping those surfaces and we'll just clean everything up nicely like this. Right around here, we're in pretty well perfect condition. We'll touch this face around here with a, a finer belt, but this back here is pretty rough and the owner did, uh, did a chomp in it right there. So we'll use a little bit more aggressive belt right here and work our way up. Now that's the finish we have. See, we've taken all the, those deep scratches, kept that sharp, crisp line, a real harsh line, because now once we buff it, that'll smooth it over and we'll still have a nice, uh, nice shape there. Cleaned up those bolsters a little bit, a few of those deep scratches, grind marks that were taken out of there. Now we'll give it a good buffing. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Man. And now we're going to get on to sanding this beautiful knife. This thing has just been so severely convex and worn away over the years. Um, doesn't really have much of a grind on there now. So I'm trying to decide if I want to re-grind a nice flat Scandi. I think that's what we're going to do. Or if I just want to convex it in. So there you can see what we have there now which is no real defined grind line. You can see it's just all convex and rubbed together, lots of different facets on there. I think we'll carve a nice flat skin day. Now this part can be pretty tricky because we're not working with a blade blank here where if we don't get our grinds right, we can start over with another billet. We have one knife, one chance, and it's already been heat treated, of course, so we're doing it on hardened steel. There is no going back here. We've got a we got a bowl of water. We have to keep this blade clean. We can't afford any mess ups here. So I'm starting with a, a worn 60 grit, which is quite coarse, but we have quite a bit of work to do. So I'll start it with this grit. We'll see how it's looking. I may change. We'll see. There we go. That's how a sh grind should look. That's clean off of the belt grinder and then that buffer. There we go. A nice flat plane. Look at that vintage beauty. Who would not want a classic like that as a part of their bushcraft kit? Man. 
You can really, you know, that's a beautiful thing about simple tools like knives and the knives I build here, is they can just, they can be kept around for so long. Even if one has been left neglected and, and poorly sharpened and, and things like that, with just, just a little bit of time and effort, can be brought back to just as functional, just as attractive as the very day it rolled off of Heli's line which I'm not sure when that would have been for this one. Maybe someone can help us out in the comment section. And the old sheath that came in is a little bit a little bit tired as well. See the color is a little bit off, which is not bad. That's fine, I don't mind that. But we have the stitching here, we're losing some stitching. We have the, the belt loop here is, is zip tied on, so we can't send this back like this. We gotta give it a little bit of care before we put that beautiful knife back in there. Let's start by getting rid of those zip ties. Looks like a lock stitch was used on this old sheath. We're going to replace the lock stitch with a saddle stitch. Ooh, our knives are ready to come out of the heat treat oven. Good thing I set that alarm because that was not in my mind. Little bit of beeswax. Go the most natural route as possible. That'll just help glue those fibers down so you don't get that messy frilly edge there. I really don't like the look of that. Now I fear if I reattach this belt loop here, it won't last very long. It looks like it's trying to tear through the leathers a little bit dry. I just don't trust it. So we're just going to rebuild another one. Very simple. Yeah, you can see that this is pretty, uh, getting pretty weak there. So don't want to risk losing this knife somewhere. With, but I don't want it to be too bulky on there. Look at that. Nice radius. Kelly's button loop. Now let's see if we can get it to look reasonably close in color. Yeah, I think that's the right color for us. Okay, fresh rivet. Do you remember this thing was zip tied on when it came in? We'll go right through. Hmm, that's a lot better. We still have our button hook here in the back. And let's check our fit. Oh yeah, very happy in there with that fresh strap. Let's just even out that finish, see if we can even it out a little bit because we have some scuff marks, places where the dye gets chewed through and stuff like that, so this is a, a nice use for the antique finish. It doesn't really, doesn't penetrate very deep into the leather. Just a nice top coat, kind of doubles as a conditioner. Look at that. A lot of this will wipe right back off again, but you can work it as long as you want into the finish. Lastly, the mink oil conditioner. I like the Feebing's Golden Mink Oil. This is the same container of mink oil I had 
when I started doing leather work years ago. So it really lasts a long, long time. It's just a beautiful, beautiful material for leather. Let's do a little edge check, make sure we're up to par. <laughs> Lovely, lovely, lovely. One last look there. Have a look at that blade. Sorry, I'm not looking you in the eyes, but I want to make sure that you get the view that you deserve. That fresh edge, it had no edge when it came in. Fixed up that pommel. Tightened up that leather stack a little bit, although we didn't get it tight, tight, so I'm going to advise the client to do a little, uh, do some oiling, see if that'll plim up. And then, Look at the color, that sheath. That stamping sheath, you could barely even tell that was on there, but now it's in there so rich. We repaired that loop. And who, like we were saying, who wouldn't want this beautiful piece in your collection or part of your kit? If you like this project, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.